Thanks a lot. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. I'm sure everyone here thanks you for the briefing. Uh, I wanted to ask, because each of you, you get, because of your positions, if you can, it's, it's a bit abstract for me. I've been trying to read it, and I'm not saying that it's badly written. It could just, the blame could be mine. How would this impact, in, in, for example, the, the, the UN police in South Sudan? What, what would be different in terms of how they patrol camps? I'm thinking of the Malakal incident, things like that. And the same as, as to DRC, given with the elections coming up. Just if you can give some examples, not to nail you down, but to try to put some, some specifics. What, what might be different if this, if this report were implemented by the Secretary General in the two police components in those two countries? Thanks a lot. Any more? Go ahead. Yeah. You do the recruitment and I'll well, do yeah. Mark? Uh, uh, recruiting police officers in this new model represents uh, <clears throat> yet another level of complexity. And yes, it is more difficult to recruit police officers because you recruit them apart from foreign police units individually and you look for very specific uh, experience, very specific abilities out of them, especially in this new model, so that they can make a relevant change in that institution that they are destined to serve. And uh, whereas a military unit is deployed as a unit, as a battalion, as a brigade, they're very clearly defined uh, roles for that and the whole unit goes. We are looking for highly skilled uh, police officers who can, or civilian experts, as uh, Hilda Johnson has said, to, to do this particular job. So it is more difficult. It is, uh, it is a, a tall order. Thank you. Go ahead. Anyway. <clears throat> yes, if I may add, uh, with regard to the recruitment, uh, rather than deploying high numbers of uh, police officers and meeting only the authorized strength uh, uh, described in Security Council mandates, uh, the incentives of the proposed new model on uh, UN poll deployment and recruitment will be the converse. It should be a more targeted and tailor-made uh, the UN poll support and more currently the police component works with other actors. So it is not difficult to recruit, but we need quality, not quantity. Maybe to answer the question from Matthew Lee on, uh, on South Sudan, uh, if I may give you two examples. Uh, I can start with the South Sudanese one. Um, clearly, um, if there had been a stronger police mandate and the new operating model had been in place prior to the crisis, um, you might have seen the South Sudan National Police hold better against ethnic divides and being embroiled in the conflict. Uh, if, the, if the institution had been built. Of course, this is a longer term process, but this is the intention of this model, is that you're doing institution building in a much more systematic way. Um, what it implies for them now is uh, another recommendation, I think, in the report, which is an urgent completion of the protection of civilians' guidance. This means that there needs to be a stronger uh, drive on the policy and guidance to the units in the field to protect civilians, how they should do it and in which way. At this point in time, there is no clarity about this. And so that's why this is an important point and one of the points in the report. And with the protection stream, you will specialize in that in a much stronger way. So hopefully that would also lead to change on the ground. But let me then make one other example, which is the Central African Republic, which we visited uh, together. The implication of the report for that would, for example, be that for the Central African Republic police development plan, there would be an assessment of the needs, the capacity gaps, where they need particular expertise, and you would put the mission in charge of looking at who would recruit for these different positions where they could, as experts, co-locate with their colleagues, help build the directorate of the police. Um, and this is how it's intended to work. At this point in time, they have several hundred generalists, but they are, almost don't have any specialists. So the, in, the difference basically is that you'll be able to, in a much better, better way, to target the, the capacity. And then the question is, will you get it? I do believe that there will be more of an incentive among PCCs to give some of their better people to a UN service if they knew that they are going to be used effectively in the way that would really help a country get their police institution up and running. I think if they are not sure about that, 
and I happen to have talked to quite a number of uh, police chiefs about this, they are more hesitant at giving their best people away. Uh, not giving them away, but seconding them to the UN. So I think there's also a benefit in this, that when you are changing the operating model and uh, making it effective use of resources, you will be having more benefit to the person deployed, but also to the country when they return. Great. Also, if I might add on your question about what will change. You know, we see a UN presence in all of these missions, and that changes over time with the uh, alterations in the Security Council resolutions that de deploy them. But uh, we believe that if these recommendations are installed, what will notably change even more profoundly will be the structures of law enforcement agencies on a national basis, so that the capacity to protect civilians will hand over from the UN at a point certain when the UN exits out of that nation, and the responsibilities are absorbed by the local police structure that is able to protect its own civilians. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And the report is here. Yep. Yeah, back there. We put it online.